Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers speeding, extortion, and resisting, and is brought to us by WFLA News Channel 8's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On February 14, 2022, Officer Julia Beskin of the Sarasota Police Department pulled over Republican congressional primary candidate Martin Hyde for speeding and texting while driving. After Mr. Hyde stops, Officer Beskin's body camera shows her exit her vehicle and approach Mr. Hyde's driver's side window. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, sir? I'm Sebastian Sarasota Police Department. You're on audio and video recording. The reason for the stop, you were observed going 57 and a 40, and you were on your phone texting while you were doing that. That was at Euclid and Fruitville. You don't need to point at the officer. I'm not pointing at you. I'm pointing in the direction where it was. I'll just do the chief, as it? Go right ahead, sir. Can you I see your license? Right? Yes, sir, I do. Can I see your license registration insurance, please? You can do this? Yes, sir. I'm sorry? I still have a job to do, sir. Yeah, okay. What's your name? Officer Beskin, it's going to be on the citation. Can I see your insurance registration and your license, please? Sir, can I have your people? Seven years, sir. Can I see your registration, please? No. You're not gonna give me your registration, sir. You can arrest me? I'm asking you if you're gonna produce me with your registration. Have you wanna have it on you? Look, go call the chief of the Tell him how rude you just been to me. Mm -hmm. Blame this video. Okay. I'm gonna call Marlon Brown. Can you call the mayor? Okay. They're not okay, darling. Tell him what to do. Okay, sir, are you refusing to produce your registration? I'm asking you if you have your registration. You're making career decisions. Okay, Why are you sir. Doing this? Sir, because you were speeding and you were texting. Where's your video? All right. Hang tight. When Officer Beskin informs Mr. Hyde that he was speeding and texting, Mr. Hyde demands to see the video evidence. However, officers are under no obligation to provide evidence to citizens to justify their traffic stops, and Mr. Hyde typically would only be legally entitled to see any video footage that existed if he challenged the citations and the video was to be used as evidence against him. Although Section 318.14 of the Florida Statutes requires the government to prove traffic offenses beyond a reasonable doubt in court, this burden can be satisfied without video evidence of any kind. For instance, Section 316.1906 of the Florida Statutes allows evidence of the speed of a vehicle measured by any radar speed measuring device to be admitted if it is obtained by an officer who meets certain conditions, such as satisfactory completion of a radar training course, and who has made an independent visual determination that the vehicle is operating in excess of the applicable speed limit, and obtain the radar evidence when conditions permit the clear assignment of speed to a single vehicle. Video evidence is also not required for an officer to stop a vehicle for speeding. In fact, as the Florida 2nd District Court of Appeals held in the 2008 case of State v. Allen, police officers can stop a vehicle for a speeding violation based on the officer's visual or oral perceptions, and verification of actual speed by the use of radar equipment or speed clocking is not necessary to justify the stop. Because Officer Beskin advised Mr. Hyde of his exact speed, it is likely that she used radar to capture his speed. But even if she had only stopped Mr. Hyde because it looked like he was speeding, it is likely a court would find that she had reasonable suspicion to make the stop. Call the supervisor. I just spoke to your boss. Okay. Was not okay. You want your paperwork? Is it your Russian immigrant status that makes you talk to people like this? 1014, sir. Call the supervisor. 14 dispatch, can you have my supervisor respond, please? Yeah. And then we'll see who goes. Okay. You don't watch no. paperwork? Oh, you, you don't have a warrant. Sir, you're going to be issued a citation. Anything you have to say. I'll wait for the supervisor. You can wait for the supervisor, but I'm going to go through what I need to go through. No, I have not interested. Right, you are going to be issued a citation. the registration. Okay. Well, you've been already issued a citation for that. For what? For failing to produce your registration. Right. All right. You Sir, you're gonna, you're gonna right be issued a citation 57 and a 40 for speeding. Your fine is 256. Here. Information in the back. You're gonna have an option to it's plead guilty. Camera. An option to plead not guilty and an option to take a safe driver's course. If you qualify for the course, it will reduce your fine. 
I'm a law-abiding citizen, and you're being bloody okay. rude to me. If you decide to go ahead and do the court, just make sure you do a prior submission of payment, as they do you require a certificate of completion. If you sign up for it, you must complete it, otherwise they will go ahead and suspend your license. Why are you lying? You have 30 days Why to reply. Why are you lying? Your payment options are on the green question. form. Your simple question. Why are you phone, lying? Phone number on the bottom Why in case you have any questions. Come? When my supervisor comes, I'll wait for him with you if you like me to. Your citation is already at the next I will wait. I will wait, but I will wait on my car. There you go. Throughout his interaction with Officer Beskin, both before and after she issues him citations, Mr. Hyde makes several comments that imply he will use his influence in the police department to get her fired if she continues with the traffic stop or issues him any citations. While attempting to intimidate a police officer is inarguably unethical, a court could also conclude that Mr. Hyde's actions violated Florida criminal law. Section 838.021 of the Florida Statutes defines the crime of corruption by threat against a public servant, which is a felony offense, and states that, quote, it is unlawful to threaten to harm any public servant with the intention to influence the performance of any act or omission within the official discretion of the public servant, in violation of a public duty, or in performance of a public duty. Because section 838.014 of the Florida statutes defines the term harm as meaning, quote, pecuniary or other loss, disadvantage, or injury to the person affected, threatening an officer's job would certainly qualify as a threat of harm, and attempting to influence an officer not to write a citation would likewise fall under the scope of this statute. Similarly, section 836.05 of the Florida statute states that, quote, Whoever maliciously threatens an injury to the person, property, or reputation of another, or maliciously threatens to expose another to disgrace, with intent to compel the person so threatened to do any act or refrain from doing any act against his or her will, shall be guilty of a felony of the second degree. However, even though Mr. Hyde's conduct could fit within the definitions of these crimes, it is possible that a court could determine that his statements were protected by the First Amendment. In the 1969 case of Watts v. United States, the Supreme Supreme Court stated that, quote, a statute such as this one, which makes criminal a form of pure speech, must be interpreted with the commands of the First Amendment clearly in mind. What is a threat must be distinguished from what is constitutionally protected speech. While extortion is not protected speech, and, as the Supreme Court explained in the 2003 case of Virginia v. Black, the First Amendment permits a state to ban a quote-unquote true threat, which is defined as, quote, those statements where the speaker means to communicate a serious expression of an intent to commit an act of unlawful violence to a particular individual or group of individuals, the state of the law regarding nonviolent quote-unquote threats is much less clear. For instance, in the 1987 case of Houston v. Hill, the Supreme Court recognized that, quote, the freedom of individuals verbally to oppose or challenge police action without thereby risking arrest is one of the principal characteristics by which we distinguish a free nation from a police state. And it is easy to imagine how defining statements about getting police officers fired as unprotected speech could lead to widespread abuse and the suppression of free speech. The rights of individuals to express their dissent with police actions must be balanced against the state's interest in protecting against corruption. And it would be interesting to see how a court would decide this case if Mr. Hyde had been criminally charged. Yeah, but you have the bad You knew exactly what you were doing and you made a mistake. If that is your feeling, you are more than welcome to fight the citations in court. I'll fight the citations. Okay. I'll fight your employment. Okay. Sarge Frangione is on his way. Okay. Speeding 57 and a 40. Uh, texting while driving. Failure to produce his registration when I asked. He told me I could look it up. Okay. You know who he is. Yes. Right? Yeah, you got identified him. Yes. Okay. Hello, Mr. Hyde. I guess Frang you start. You talked to Sergeant Frangione by the phone. I did. Yeah. Okay. He's on his way. She just she requested another unit, so that's why another unit. You give someone a certificate uh, ticket for no registration when they've got the registration. She's trying to make her spurs, but it's a big mistake. Well, this one is the expired one, but well, it doesn't make it. It takes yeah. two seconds. Yeah, we're going to make sure that she pays the price for being disrespectful. 
Mr. Hyde argues that because he eventually provided a copy of his registration certificate to Officer Beskin, he should not have been cited for refusing to present his registration, despite the fact that it was expired. However, even if his registration certificate had not been expired, it is possible that Mr. Hyde could still be cited with a violation of the registration statute. Section 320.0605 of the Florida statute states that, quote, the registration certificate or an official copy thereof shall, at all times while the vehicle is being used or operated on the roads of this state, be in the possession of the operator thereof, or be carried in the vehicle for which issued, and shall be exhibited upon demand of any authorized law enforcement officer. A violation of this statute is a non-criminal traffic infraction, and, although Section 318.18 of the Florida Statutes allows the clerk of the court to dismiss a case under this statute if the driver can show proof of having a valid registration at the time of arrest, this is not required. Additionally, Mr. Hyde's initial refusal to provide his registration may have violated Section 316.072 of the Florida Statutes, which states that, quote, It is unlawful and a misdemeanor of the second degree for any person willfully to fail or refuse to comply with any lawful order or direction of any law enforcement officer. In the 2020 case of United States v. Wilson, the 11th Circuit concluded that an officer had probable cause to arrest an individual for violation of this statute when he repeatedly refused to produce his driver's license in response to the officer's valid order to do so during a legal traffic stop. Similarly, Mr. Hyde's conduct could also constitute resisting an officer without violence, which Section 843.02 of the Florida Statutes defines as resisting, obstructing, or opposing any officer in the lawful execution of any legal duty, without offering or doing violence to the person of the officer. As the 11th Circuit explained in the unpublished 2017 case of Ryder v. Andrews, quote, the refusal to comply with an officer's request during the lawful execution of a legal duty may constitute resisting without violence. In this case, the court went on to conclude that refusing to provide license and registration during a valid traffic stop, at the very least, gave officers arguable probable cause to arrest an individual for resisting without violence. Given this precedent, a court would likely conclude that Officer Beskin would have been within her authority to arrest Mr. Hyde for violating either of these statutes when he repeatedly refused to present his registration certificate. Let me go talk to her and see. Well, it's a waste of time. Yeah. She's good at in her head. I know exactly who she is. Angie only told me exactly who she is. That's fine. Seven years might not turn into eight. Proceed to the route. Stay in your car. I just want to know if you want me to go back to the station. You can go to the station. Yep, go to the station. Hey, Martin. Yeah, I have to leave it on. Right. Mr. Hyde eventually took the citations and drove away, after securing a promise that Officer Beskin's body camera footage would be reviewed. On February 22nd, Mr. Hyde issued a public apology for his actions on social media, and has since dropped out of the Republican primary. Although the Sarasota PD has not issued a public comment on the incident, a spokesperson indicated that Officer Beskin's actions were not under review. Court records show that Mr. Hyde's speeding and texting while driving citations were paid on February 21st, 2022. But as of the date of this episode, he has not paid the fine for the registration citation. Overall, Officer Beskin gets an A+ for remaining calm and professional throughout the encounter, treating Mr. Hyde with civility and respect despite his hostility, and working to de-escalate the situation in the face of threats to her career. Although Officer Beskin likely would have been within her authority to arrest Mr. Hyde at several points during their exchange, she instead exercised her discretion to try to de-escalate the situation by calling a supervisor and waiting at the scene until he arrived. At no point did Officer Beskin say or do anything to provoke a response from Mr. Hyde, and she maintained a cordial and professional demeanor while Mr. Hyde insulted her, made comments about her nationality, and threatened to have her fired. I commend Officer Beskin for having the courage to carry out her duties without showing bias or favoritism to Mr. Hyde, and for remaining professional but firm when he threatened to use his influence against her. Officer Beskin was able to set aside her ego to de-escalate this situation, and I encourage other members of law enforcement to learn from Officer Beskin's example. Former candidate Hyde gets an F. 
for maintaining a hostile and angry demeanor throughout the encounter, attempting to misuse his political influence to avoid being cited for traffic offenses, and potentially committing multiple crimes during the traffic stop. Much of this interaction's escalation can likely be attributed to Mr. Hyde's ego, and his apparent sense of entitlement based on his position in the community and his contributions to the Sarasota PD. In fact, Mr. Hyde admitted as much in an apology letter he wrote in the Sarasota Herald Tribune, stating that, quote, I admit that I did expect the reception that I get from most local cops, which is a positive one, because I have fought, in my aggressive manner, on their behalf on everything from officer pay to internal affairs matters. At the point when I realized that my rather silly statement, do you know who I am, wasn't going to work, I should have shut up and let it go, but I didn't. Unfortunately, instead of restraint and a little humility, it was righteous indignation that ran through my veins. While issuing this apology did require some level of courage and integrity on Mr. Hyde's part, it in no way excuses his attempts to abuse his political sway for personal gain. And this interaction highlights the conflict that often arises at the intersection of politics and policing. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.